Hey, what's up, Reactive Rebels? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a powerful architectural pattern that's transforming how we build modern applications. Event-driven architecture. Forget those rigid, tightly coupled systems. EDA is all about embracing asynchronous communication, reactivity, and real-time data flow. If you need a refresher course on what asynchronous communication is, you can take a pause here and see the concept explained in another video I linked below. So, without further ado, grab your favorite energizing beverage, smash that subscribe button, and let's get this event party started. Let's face it, traditional architectures can be a real pain. Think of a monolithic application. Everything's crammed into one giant code base. And when you need to make a change, you have to deploy the entire application, even if you're only modifying a small part of it. Scaling is difficult because you have to scale the entire monolith, even if only one component is under heavy load. And if one component fails, it can bring down the whole system. This is where event-driven architecture comes to the rescue. So what exactly is event-driven architecture? In a nutshell, it's an architectural pattern where components communicate with each other through asynchronous events. Instead of directly calling each other, components publish events to a central event bus and other components subscribe to those events and react accordingly. This decoupling allows for greater flexibility, scalability, and resilience. Let's break down the key components of event-driven architecture. 1. Events. These are notifications that something has happened. Examples include a user registered, an order was placed, a payment was processed. 2. Producers. These are the components or services that generate and publish events to the event bus. 3. Consumers. These are the components or services that subscribe to events and process them. Fourth, event bus. This is the central hub that facilitates the communication between producers and consumers. Examples include Apache Kafka or RabbitMQ. Let's use an analogy to make this clearer. Think of a news broadcast. The news reporters, who are the producers in this case, publish news events to the airwaves. Viewers or consumers tune into the channels they're interested in and react to the news events that are relevant to them. The news broadcast system, the event bus, facilitates the communication between the reporters and the viewers. The reporters don't need to know who's watching and the viewers don't need to know who's reporting the news. They're completely decoupled. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of event-driven architecture, or EDA for short. This model can be incredibly powerful, but like any architectural approach, it comes with trade-offs you need to understand. Let's start with the advantages. One of the biggest benefits is decoupling. In an event-driven system, your components don't need to know about each other directly. They simply respond to events as they happen. This loose coupling makes your system more flexible and allows individual parts to evolve independently. Because of that decoupling, scalability becomes much easier. You can scale just the services that are under heavy load, like a payment processor or an analytics engine, without touching the rest of the system. Another key benefit is resilience. If one service goes down, the rest of the system doesn't necessarily crash. Messages can be retried or queued, giving your system a higher tolerance for failure. EDA also enables real-time data flow. As soon as an event happens, like a user placing an order or updating their profile, other services can react immediately. This is especially useful for analytics, alerts, and automation. And finally, flexibility. You can easily add new consumers or services that listen for events, without modifying the existing system. That makes your architecture more extensible and adaptable over time. You can already tell there's a difference in responsibilities. The producer only needs to publish the message and that's it. It doesn't need to worry about if the consumers have issues receiving the messages. The consumers now have full responsibility of handling and processing the event or message, 
and handle any errors it is processing. If any issues arise, it can simply read from the event bus and process the same message again. But with these benefits come some challenges. The first one is complexity. Event-driven systems can be harder to design and understand. You need to carefully plan how events are structured, where they go, and how services will react to them. Testing and debugging also become more difficult. Because everything is asynchronous, it's not always clear where a failure originated. You might need distributed tracing tools just to follow the flow of a single request. And finally, there's the issue of eventual consistency. Since services are reacting to events at different times, your data may not be immediately in sync across the system. That's a trade-off you have to manage carefully, especially in systems where consistency is critical. So, event-driven architecture offers decoupling, scalability, and real-time responsiveness, but it requires careful planning, strong observability, and most importantly, a mindset shift from traditional request response thinking. Let's explore a couple of real-world scenarios where event-driven architecture is commonly used. First, e-commerce. Think about what happens when someone places an order on an online store. That one action triggers several things behind the scenes. An order confirmation is sent, the inventory is updated, a shipping process is started, and analytics log the sale. Each of these actions can be handled by a separate service, all reacting to the same event order placed. This is a perfect use case for event-driven architecture. It allows each part of the system to respond independently, scale as needed, and even recover from failure without affecting the rest. Next, social media. When you post an update or like a photo, you're actually generating events. Those events might trigger notifications to your friends, update your feed, log engagement data, or even trigger content moderation. All of that happens asynchronously and in real time, using event-driven principles. It keeps the platform responsive, scalable, and able to process millions of interactions per second without centralizing everything into one big system. These are just two examples, but they show how event-driven design helps systems react quickly, stay modular, and scale effectively. Finally, let's talk about some best practices for designing and building reliable event-driven architectures. These will help keep your system clean, resilient, and easy to manage over time. First, define clear event schemas. Just like a contract, your event structure should be predictable and consistent. Whether it's a user registration or a payment process, each event should follow a well-defined format. This makes it easier for different services to understand and respond to the events reliably. Second, make your consumers idempotent. That means they should be able to receive the same event more than once and still behave correctly. Why? Because in distributed systems, duplicates can and will happen. If a consumer processes an order event twice and ships two packages, that's a costly bug. Design for this from the beginning. Third, implement robust error handling. Not everything will go smoothly and that's okay, as long as your system is prepared. Make sure that when one service fails or something goes wrong, it doesn't take down the entire pipeline. Use retries, dead letter queues, or fallback logic to prevent cascading failures. And finally, monitor and log your events. It's crucial to have visibility into what's happening across your system. Track the flow of events, measure how long things take, and capture failures. This helps with debugging, performance tuning, and even security monitoring. Following these best practices will help ensure that your event-driven system is not only functional, but also resilient, observable, and easy to scale. All right, event enthusiasts, that's it for today's exploration of event-driven architecture. Hopefully, you now have a solid understanding of this powerful architectural pattern and how it can transform the way you build applications. Remember to embrace the power of events, design your systems to be reactive, and unlock the potential of real-time data flow. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel for more tech adventures, and leave a comment with any questions you have.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.